Nikki Heaton was 19 years old when her pop career took off. She was going to be the next biggest star until she disappeared. And now we're learning why. It's because Diddy and Kanye attacked Nikki in the studio, ripping off her clothes and then blacklisting her from Hollywood. This is exactly why the music industry is a scary place. So let's get into it. I used to be a big fan of Nikki Heaton's. I remember finding her on YouTube and watching her cover songs and then following her as she made her own music. Like her song Bad Intentions brings back so many memories of me listening with my friends and my sister as we were growing up. But as I got older, I started to realize that Nikki just stopped making music. And I always wondered what happened to her. And now with Diddy getting locked up, Nikki has her own story to tell about him and Kanye and much more. Now this story can be triggering because Nikki accuses Kanye and Diddy of harming her when she was just 19 years old. Nikki Heaton is a self-taught U.S. singer and songwriter who gained popularity on YouTube. She would go and cover like rap songs but on a guitar and it was super cute. I remember her cover of Sosa is where I found her. Hey, what's up? Hello. She started posting videos of her covers and some original songs on YouTube in 2011, which ultimately gained traction and caught the attention of record labels. So now let's go ahead and talk about what Nikki has to share about her experience getting into the music industry. Now at 19 years old, she had no idea what she was getting into. I mean, she grew on YouTube. So to get into the real world and to be in a room with Kanye and Diddy, that's scary. Following the success of her song, Bad Intentions, Nikki shared that she had been invited to Kanye's recording studio shortly after leaving home. Upon arriving, she observed that both Diddy and Kanye were completely effed up, drunk, but also probably on something else, and that they were looking at her in a way that made her feel immediately uncomfortable. When they offered her a drink, she pretended to take a sip, sensing that her act seemed to satisfy them. So they wanted to, I mean, in my opinion, allegedly drug her in this moment. That's like the theme when it comes to Diddy. As time passed, the other women in the studio left, including Nikki's manager, who said she would return shortly. This left Nikki alone with Diddy and Kanye and a few of their associates. Soon the atmosphere became threatening. She claimed they pressured her to take off her clothes because it was so hot in the studio. Let's react to some of this footage together. Is the music industry as evil as people say it is? And I was like, it's more evil than you could possibly imagine. I was 19 years old, like I had just left home um, and working with my, my, my manager and we were in LA and doing all these crazy things. And all of a sudden I got a call one day and it's like, hey, like Kanye wants you to come to the studio. Um, and we walk in and there's all these ladies there wearing their um, club gear and Kanye and Diddy are already like out of their mind, just like completely fucked up. Um, drunk but probably something else and diddy hands me a drink kanye hands lauren a drink and we're like that's weird <laughs> why are they serving us diddy kept looking at me and kanye kept looking at lauren and like they were exchanging glances and i'm like they're like watching me strangely probably trying to see if the bait had taken the drug i'm like okay let me pretend to drink and like i'm not actually doing it um and like that seemed to like make them happy like me like pretending to like join in and immediately I'm like, there's something in this drink. There's something, there's something in this drink. Um, and I didn't know what to do. Uh, and I, like, my manager was like across the room, but like close enough, but like not next to me. So I couldn't like whisper to her, but I wanted to tell her, I'm like, hey, don't, don't drink this. There's something wrong with this, but I couldn't. So I reached for my phone and I start to type and Kanye takes the phone out of my hand and he's like, who are you texting? Like, you don't need to text anyone. Like we're having a party. And I was like, okay. And he like puts it on one of the- That's so stressful. Imagine someone just taking your phone. I would be trying to book it. One of the speakers. And I'm like, fuck, <laughs> now what do I do? Um, like, I, I, don't, I don't know what to do. And I see my manager take a sip and I'm like- Now when these guys tried to go after her, she said, please stop, stop. She found herself in a terrifying situation as they forcibly tore her shirt off, leaving her almost exposed against the wall. Nikki explained the most haunting part wasn't the physical attack. It was the overwhelming feeling of helplessness when she looked to another man in the room for help. She mouthed help to only see him turn away, which heightened her fear. 
So imagine this, you're out grabbing a coffee, maybe running a quick errand, and then out of nowhere, bam, you're in a car accident and now you've got medical bills adding up like a bad to-do list. And no surprise, the insurance company is giving you the runaround. It's like, really, can I catch a break? Sadly, this happens way too often. You've got these firms that promise you the world and leave you buried in paperwork and stuck with those low ball settlements. That's not right, but it doesn't have to be your story. Enter Morgan and Morgan, America's largest injury law firm. These guys are like the adventures of legal help. With over a thousand attorneys and offices in each state, they've got the muscle to take on big insurance companies and fight for you. And let me tell you, they don't mess around. Just this year, they locked in a $26 million settlement in Philly, 40 times the insurance offer. So clearly Morgan & Morgan is the firm you want fighting for you. Plus it's super easy, no appointments, no stuffy meetings. You could submit everything they need right on your phone. And it doesn't cost you you a dime unless you win. So if you've been injured or you know somebody, don't wait. You can go to forthepeople.com slash Sloan, or you can check out my link in the description below. Remember, it's all free unless you win. Morgan & Morgan has your back because they're for the people. Thank you for sponsoring this video and enjoy. That is so scary. It reminds me of this creepy guy that tried to attack me. Like it was like two years ago. It, it was like, like pride and he was he was very tall, like six foot seven, trying to swing at me because he got mad that I wasn't into him. He, he, and now in hindsight, I've seen he's like, he fights other people too. Never dated him or anything, but he tried to go after me and he got me onto the ground, pushed me. And I looked at these people, I said, help, help. He's going to attack me. And no one did anything. And it was so scary because if I saw someone doing that, I would be jumping into action or at least I would hope I would. I mean, in my heart, I can't imagine looking at someone in need and watching them about to get attacked and not screaming or anything. They had no reaction, at least in my case. And then I see her take another sip, two sips out of this little vodka cranberry cup. And I'm like, oh, I, what, what, do I, what do I do? Two sips and I watch her face flush. And all of a sudden, like I look over and she's speaking really loud and like making jokes and I'm like, whoa. Because like the drugs are hitting her. Like this isn't her. Like she doesn't make jokes. She's fucking terrified of people. Like she doesn't even talk. And I was like, it's already, it's already hitting her. Like a hundred percent. I just knew that the drinks were all laced with something. Um, and she starts like almost being like belligerent a little bit, but not in like a crazy way, just like really enjoying herself. And I'm like, that's not her. That's not her. She doesn't even want to be here. Like this is weird. And all of a sudden she like, dismisses the studio hose like she's like she's like you can leave you can leave and i'm like oh my god like what's going on and the girls file out they go to like a different a, a different studio or they go somewhere and um i'm like i have to do something I, I this is such something. a weird I setting and like I, go, oh, I don't ever want to be in a I studio. Get my phone where kanye put it on one of the speakers and as i'm going to get it i turn and my manager's walking out and i'm like no no, no, no. like where like where 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 are you going um I'm already seeing people being like, this is Cap. What do I have to gain? Let me just ask you, what do I have to gain? I'm in a farm in the middle of nowhere. I'm not in the industry anymore. I'm not filing a lawsuit, so I'm not getting paid. I'm not looking for clout because who gives a fuck about me? So how, why would I lie about this? Yeah, so I see her start to leave and I'm like, like where where are you going and it's so sad because she had so much potential and these kind of instances just kicked her out of the like the industry she didn't want to be in this she's like it's fine i'm just going to the bathroom and i was like no 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 stay 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 and she's like it's right there i'm just gonna go to the bathroom and i was like okay and she walks out and all of a sudden i realize that i'm in this studio the music's low the lights are dim but you can still like see everything and um I realized that I'm in the studio with Diddy and Kanye and they're both off their shit. And there's three other men, an executive that works with Kanye, his engineer and his cousin and me alone. Kanye and Diddy have realized that I'm the only girl in the room. <clears throat> and they're like out of their minds and they start coming towards me and they're like, Hmm, don't you want to take your clothes off? Like, it's so hot in here. And I'm like, no, fine. It's, I'm fine. Like, oh, that's so creepy. And they're like, come on. Like, it's just us. Like, we're all just friends. Like, let us just, like, see, like, how you look. 
and I'm like, okay, I don't, I'm fine. And like, I still haven't gotten scared yet, you know? Like, I'm still like, this is a bad situation. I'm creeped out, but like, there's no reason to panic. There's other men here and they're coming towards me more and they're trying to like take my clothes off. And I'm, I'm, I'm like at that point where I'm like, this, this is not good, but I'm like still trying to like play it off. Just like, stop, you guys are stupid. Like, get out of here, like, don't touch me. And I start to get a little bit apprehensive because I'm pretty much like backed up against the wall. Like there's only one exit and I'm pressed up against this door. And I'm still not completely terrified yet, but uh, I'm like, you guys stop, like stop, stop. And they're getting to the point where they have like ripped my shirt off. And um, it's like the same type of guys are like, where's my hug? That kind of energy, but like way worse. Like I'm like almost fully exposed at this point. And they're both coming at me and I'm like, you guys, like seriously, this isn't, this isn't funny anymore. And I look to my left where his ex executive is. Like we know him pretty well. Like I've, we've been around him a lot. He's literally three feet away from me. Like if I reached and he reached too, like we could touch, like he's that close. And I look and I'm like, hey, like I give that look where I'm just like, come on, like step in, like this isn't cool. Like you're a grown man, like you're like 50 years old. I know you have a family, like you know this isn't right, like do something. And this is the part that for as long as I live, I will never forget. It isn't actually the aspect of being assaulted. That's not what haunts me. It's, it's this. As these two grown men were pawing at me, trying to take my clothes off, I look over- And that's also, I didn't know the context the guy was in his 50s. Like, what the hell? Like, he may have a daughter, a wife. Why would you even, I can't even- To this man asking for help, and I literally mouth the word help. And we lock eyes. And he looks away. And I'm like, okay. There's still two more men in, in the room. And I look to his engineer next, who's sitting right, right next to him. And I know that he's married and he has, he just had a little baby girl. And I'm like, okay, he's going to do something. Um, and I look at him next and I'm like, okay, like do something, say something, do, do anything. And he, he looks down at his phone and starts texting. And then I was like, oh, fuck. Um, I look at Kanye's cousin next and I'm like, <laughs> do something, you know, like do something. And he spins his chair around. And that's when that like gut wrenching fear set in. And I was like, oh shit, <laughs> no one's fucking safe. Oh, stressing me out. You could tell she's getting very choked up too. Saving me tonight. Nikki was eventually able to escape by lunging forward, causing the rappers to lose their balance, giving her a chance to reach for the door. She hid in another studio for 25 minutes before reuniting with her manager and arranging for an Uber to leave the scene. And that's when I was truly scared. Um, at this point, they had ripped, they had ripped my my shirt off, and they were trying to get my pants off, and I realized that I was completely alone and um I completely alone but not alone like there's plenty of people who could help you and where's your manager closed my eyes for a second and I was like god help me what do I do my eyes were closed and I and I prayed and I said god help me what do I do and it was like it was like clear as day I heard this in my head and it didn't make any sense <laughs> I heard, go towards them. And I was like, oh, f***ing great. The one time I asked God for help, Satan answers. Because why, why the f*** would I go towards these two f who are f assaulting me? Like, why would I do that? And then all of a sudden it clicked. My back was up against the glass wall. I could not go any further back. That was the only exit. He said, go towards them. They were already drunk off their shit. They were f***ed up. So I lunged forward, I stepped forward, and it like threw them off balance. Like they were like, oh, you know, and like they stepped back at least a foot and a half. And the moment that they did, I reached behind my back, I pulled the door and I slipped out grabbing my clothes. And I ran across the hall, across this corridor, and I hid inside of an empty studio that was black. 
Um, and I sat there for like 20, 25 minutes. Eventually I got us both out and I got us in an Uber and um, what about all those other girls that were there? And I like, I pray for them every day because I always think about it. That is horrific. It explains so much because when I say I used to listen to all of her music, I still have it saved on my Spotify. I loved her music and she's so talented, but moments like this would scare me away and any other person. And, you know, she's really incredibly strong for getting out of that moment and pushing them forward. And I, I believe every single detail that she's sharing here because it's not extraordinary. You know, it's not like crazy make believe. Like we are seeing what Diddy is capable of. And she's even acknowledging like, I got out of this. What about the other people who could not get out? But thank you guys for watching this video. Please check out my TikTok at Sloan Hooks and my Instagram with the same username. And I'll see you guys in a new video soon. Bye, guys.